Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the fourth installment of the short mini-series of Introduction and Working with i2 Software's Forest Pack Pro. Now, we are going to try and build up on what we already learned in the previous three uh, videos. So if you haven't seen those and you're new to uh, Forest Pack Pro, then check the links below in the description and check out those videos as well. So in this video, we will try and actually we will see how we can use the already existing libraries within Forest Pack Pro to expedite our ways of building stuff for our exterior scenes. So for this, I have this very, very simple uh, looking plane. I've added a bit of noise to it, just enough so it can resemble a bit of, well, ground. For it, I'm going to add a bit of uh, texture so it looks like a ground. So as you can see, nothing too fancy. Everything is very planar. So let's start. First thing, I'm going to hit on Forest Pack Pro and click on our plane. Right away, it's going to ask me if I want to limit the visibility. Sure, why not? Let's limit it. And we get this default uh, spread. In your case, it might give you uh, planes, nothing to worry about because, well, it's however it starts. All right, and I had a bit of a crush, but nothing too important. Uh, like I said, as soon as you open up, this is how your uh, Forest Pack Pro should look. So from here, uh, this is pretty much just the standard one. So what we want to take a look at in this video is this button over here in our geometry. So instead of a template or instead of using a custom object in this video, I want to go over and use some of the already existing elements in our libraries. So as soon as you click on the library, it's going to open up this window. Now here's a great thing. In the library, you have these presets. You have some free models over here you can uh, use. You have some 3D free models, as you can see over here, and you have some 2D ones. So it all kind of uh, depends on what you need. The interesting thing is when you use the presets, for example, you have lawns, you have leaves, meadows, and stones, or even gravel you can use for path. So for this, let's choose one. I mean, let's go through. And the great thing is it's not just these, but you can simply scroll down and see all of the laws that are available to you to choose. Now, the great thing here is that you have a preview. So you pretty much get an idea of what to expect when you take one of these presets. So for example, let's take the daisies large. All right. Or we can even choose the daisy detail, large daisy detail. All right. Let's go with this one. It's going to ask me if I want to, uh, all right, actually this is telling me that the number of rendered items will be higher than what we see on the screen. So, okay. And here we go. As you can see, I've added a camera over here. And in the beginning, it actually asked me if I want to limit all the geometry to basically what this camera is uh, uh, looking at. So as you can see, this camera is only looking at this portion of the mesh, which is the only portion that is getting any of uh, the spread. So for example, if I move this to the side, you can see that it automatically updates. So it only shows where the camera is going to be looking at, which is a great plus. So for example, I'm going to select my mesh right here. And as soon as I uh, select it, you're going to notice a few things that I've actually added three different geometry uh, objects over here by uh, simply selecting the library. So let's render out a preset and see how this thing looks as it is right out of the box. So render. 
And I stopped the render mid-render, actually not a mid-render, but I uh, just rendered out a small portion over here, which comes and to the next point, which is time consuming. Whenever you use the library, depending on what is the scale of your scene, you might actually end up with a bit of a problem on your hand. That problem is either the scattering is going to be too small or in some cases it might even be too big and you might end up with a very dense geometry which will be very small and in turn it will take a lot of time to be rendered. For example, this is a thousand by seven hundred resolution. So this is not a big picture, this is not a big image. It should be very fast to render, but it only managed to render out this portion in about 10 minutes. So for the whole thing, it would probably take an hour, which is not something I would like to do for this tutorial, uh, because that is not the, well, the point of this tutorial. Which comes to the next point, and that is, like I said, the size. If for me at least, it looks like everything is too small. So the way to increase the size for this is I'm going to go over all of these guys and we're, uh, when we drop down here where it says global size to 100, I'm gonna increase this to let's say 500 and see if that is going to change. Whoop, yep, that changed quite a bit. That changed for everything. So 500 will make everything five times bigger. So let's try with smaller one, like 300. Yeah, 300 should be more in tune. So for this, I'm gonna try and just re-render a small, smaller region like this and see if this is gonna change a bit. All right, and as I can see, by just because this uh, piece over here cleared up in five minutes, I can see that now some of the elements here are starting to poke through and they're more visible, which means that I am getting on the right path and I just need to increase the size even further. So about 600% should give us a bit more bigger grass elements. And I'm going to do one more thing. I don't want to have all, all, all of this grass to be so clumped up together. So like we saw in the previous videos, we are going to jump down in the distribution map. From here, by default, when you use uh, this preset, you have everything set at full. I want to put it at dense. This is going to make it so it's a bit more uh, non-uniformly spread out. And as we saw previous uh, in the previous videos, when we have grass, we want to have some transform in it. And here it's enabled, enabled, and enabled. So that's good. I'm going to make this a bit more like 50. And with these changes, now let's re-render and see how this thing is going to look like. All right. So now in five minutes, this time it cleared out the entire thing. So as you can see, the whole square has been uh, rendered out and the grass is starting to look realistic. Opposed to what we had in the beginning, now the grass is starting to look more realistic. So what you would like to pick up from uh, what you saw here is generally whenever you're using uh, one of the library items, make sure that uh, those items are going to be in tune with the scale of your seed. If it's too small, increase the global scale. If it's too big, decrease it, just so it's in tune with what you have in your scene. So that's a good thing to pick up from that library, from using those library items. Next thing I want to uh, show you guys is something that we've already done in one of the previous videos, and that is a limit where everything is going to be scattered depending on a simple spline. So for this, I'm going to go over in the top viewport, just make one line, for example, like this. Then I'm going to uh, just get it up so it's above our uh, greens. Right click, I'm going to make this smooth so it's just a nice track. Again, I'm going to hold down shift and hold it down so I make a copy of this. So now I have two lines, because you can see it over here. Really poor choice of color. 
Thank you, Max. All right, so I have those two lines. Since I want to use them as a pathway, all I have to do is go over here, uh, select my uh, Forest Pack Pro, and in the areas, I want to add it as a use plan area. So click here and select the spline. By default, this is set up to include. I want it to be as exclude. But here is the thing, as it is right now, it's exclude, but it's only a line. I want it to be with both of these lines as a closed area. So for this, I'm gonna select a line, attach it to the one in the bottom, and refine, connect both those lines, connect only. Connect only on the other side. And now we select the edges and make sure we have enough threshold and weld them together. So since they were an excluded area, you're gonna see that everything down those lines has been excluded now and there is no longer any, um, well, any grass along that pathway. If we change where those uh, vertices are, we're gonna see that the, the pathway is going to follow that line, which is great. Now, here's the thing. What happens if we want to have a different set of uh, elements being scattered along this path? For example, if we wanna have a pavement or pathway made out of cobblestone or something like that, how do we uh, constrain it just to that path? Well, for that, we are going to use this same exact line, but instead of using uh, the Forest Pack Pro that we use for this grass, we are actually going to go ahead and make another Forest Pack Pro. So I'm gonna click on Forest Pack Pro, and now it's going to ask me to select on what I wanted to bind it to. I wanna bind it to my spline. So click on the spline, and now you have elements or scattering objects along that spline. Now here's the thing. This spline is using is being used for three things now. It's being used primarily to control the exclusion area for the grass and is being controlled as include area for this second forest pack pro. So now once we have that, we want to get all of these objects bound to this plane as well. So for that, we have to go over in areas, click on add new spline area, and click on, whoops, another spline area, but we want to have Actually, I was wrong. Instead of using it as an area, we already have this area converted here, or actually uh, we have the area set for this spline. What we need to do is tell it on what surface we want it to be. So you go down to the surface area, you click on the add surface, you click on the plus, and you click on the surface. And now everything that is going or that was scattered on this uh, spline will be projected down to our surface. And here's the interesting part. If you move these vertices now, it will automatically control where the grass is. And at the same time, it will also control where all the geometry that's being scattered along those lines is here. So we have double controllers for the grass and the cobblestone. Now the only thing that we are left with is we need to take this uh, new Forest Pack Pro. We can, over, uh, we can go back down to geometry and instead of the default one, we can go back to the library one. And from the library, we can choose uh, one of the gravel or if you have something else that you would like to use as uh, the pathway, feel free and use it. For me, I'm gonna try and, well, find something that can, well, it's gonna look interesting here. So let's go with, 
I don't know, maybe... Yeah, let's go with this one. 20 millimeter uh, bosled gravel. All right, so select it. It's going to put it all down the road to this spline. So again, since this is 600%, I'm gonna try to get the scale to 600% as well. See if this is gonna be big enough from what I can see here. It might be, but let's just get it to 1200. Yeah, this should be a tad bit better. All right, so let's see how this thing is gonna look like once we render it, All right? Let me just select, okay this portion over here and hopefully this will not take too long all right so it, as it cleared up this portion i actually noticed a problem and i'm actually i did not think this was going to happen but since it did it's a nice thing that because i can uh, explain what the problem is uh, basically it didn't render out any of the geometry that was over here and once it actually stopped it it gave me a warning telling me that the I should probably check the stats and see in the general rollout the stats uh, button so I can see what the problem is. So when I click it, I basically am told that the maximum number of items exceeded in the la uh, last render, adjust display parameters. So this is basically telling you what the problem is. So uh, once you go over here down in the display, you basically have the max maximum number of items here and it's i think it's like one million and if you go above that you are basically entering the realm of batshit crazy numbers but because we have a very large amount of little uh, rocks we are going just to add one more zero over here and hopefully max doesn't explode on us so again i'm gonna try and re-render this and see how that thing is going to work this is in the render max items in the opacity in the viewport so this is in the viewport and this is in the render so again let's re-render and see how this thing is gonna behave this time Okay, so those 10 extra million poly, uh, extra million <laughs> items did fix the problem. And now we can see that we are slowly starting to see uh, some of those stones come in our scene. But, well, the render times go up considerably. It just managed to clean all of this up in only five minutes. So the for this whole piece over here, it, the estimation was about 25 minutes, which means that for the entire image, it's probably going to go in the realm of a few hours, which is not something I would like to sit around and wait for it. Okay. So what we can do here is use the same uh, things that we just did with the grass, increase the size of the stones, dabble around with the distribution until we get to a place in which we are actually comfortable with working. But that, again, is not the point of this video. If you want to get it to a uh, well, a place in which you're going to be comfortable, uh, you're going to feel comfortable for a final render. Be my guest, tweak around and play around with the uh, final results, and you will end up with uh, really decent looking uh, final results. So, the only thing that I want to show you here is another problem namely, what would happen if you, for example, want to add a tree or maybe trees? All right, so for this, I'm gonna go and I have a few uh, brushes or bushes and trees added over here. As you, as you can see, I have two models in here. These do not come with Forest Pack Pro. These are actually uh, um, bought from an online store. And for example, if you're looking for high quality models, then be my guest and check out, for example, uh, Evermotion has a really great store. When you go over there, their shop, just uh, over here, you have greenery and plants. 
feel free and browse through it. They have some really high detailed flowers, some great small plants, trees. It can really help you boast, uh, boast your uh, realism especially for scenes in which realism is what is uh, asked from you. All right, so I'm going to close this. And for example, oops, okay. If you have a tree already selected, what you need to do first is add a new Forest Pack Pro. I'm going to click on uh, the plane here. It's going to, you want to enable it? Yes. And now you can see we got all of those extra little um, greens. So I'm going to go over to my Modify tab. I'm going to click on Custom Object and click on the tree. So this is going to take that tree and scatter it all over our scene, which is really something that we don't want to happen. Uh, for example, if we go down to the distribution map, here we can control the spread to be very scattered, for example, but even it, when it's very scattered, you have a problem. In the middle of the road, you have trees, which is something that you do not want. Or maybe if we, for example, uh, take the spline and exclude it, we're going to fix the problem with the trees. But we still have the problem that we cannot control where exactly those trees are going to show up. Well, that is where the option of, uh, just a second, the option of the tree editor comes into play. So basically, when you open up the tree editor, it's going to give you two modes. The first one is generate. This is the default option which generates uh, geometry based on whatever settings you have. And the second one is basically when you go over to custom edit. So for this, I'm going to go over to custom edit and are you sure it will, it says it will disable all of the custom edit modes. We will disable the area and distribution parameters. Yes. And now you see this little uh, icon over here. When you click it, now it's giving you the ability to choose wherever you want to place a tree. For example, I'm going to go over here and use the model. And now when I add, I can add trees when, wherever I need them. So uh, the thing is, when you're adding trees, make sure that you are in either a top viewport or a, a side one, because it's kind of hard to get it in the perspective one. But as you can see, as I'm moving it along, it is. There we go. And now it added them all, uh, all along that line over here. The thing is, when you press this, enable items in sub object level, it's giving you the ability to choose individual trees. So for example, if I don't want to have a single tree, I can select and delete it. Or if I want to have, uh, have it moved, I can select and move it to another position and pretty much clean up the scene any way I want. So for this, I'm going to leave those up there. I'm going to go ahead and add a few more in the top viewport. And this should help us populate our scene in a much more interesting manner. I'm going to select this, deselect tree editor off and check the transform. I'm going to enable the translation, enable the rotation and the scale, pretty much the standard one. So we have a much more interesting looking um, forest patch. All right. And now if we take a look at our uh, screen, what we have over here, I can actually just add a few more trees on this side because, well, it's a personal preference it would make the road a tad bit more interesting. Just need to select it. And again, I'm going to go over down to the trees editor model, go into the custom add and 
drop in a few more trees in here. All right, awesome. Turn off the tree editor. Turn off the forest. And now if I re-render, I should get a much more different result. For this, I'm gonna go and render out this region over here. Hopefully it will go a tad bit faster. All right, and let's render. All right, so five minutes into the render, and I can see that the trees that I have scattering up here, they're showing up rather nicely. And I can actually just stop the render because I will do a final render, which will be in a higher resolution as soon as the video is finished. So I don't want to spend any more time just for rendering this portion, but what you guys had uh, actually managed to see me do here is show you guys how you can use a preset of grass and how to use that preset and how to control it over a larger area then how to uh, uh, well how to limit it to certain areas like the road how to exclude it and then use that same exact spline to help you with uh, adding extra geometry just for the road, which was the gravel. And then in the end, you manage to see how you can add custom elements to your uh, scene or your scattering uh, object by using the tree editor. So all in all, this should help you quite a bit in, uh, in your scene. So the only thing that you need to understand is if you decide to go this route you're going to get realistic end results but it will require considerable amount of time for example from what i can see over here if i really really wasn't asked to do this road with the geometry i would probably uh, fake it and use uh, texture with additional uh, displacement or bump to achieve this uh, result but sometimes you will get a requirement where you simply have to pave this with certain amount of or a certain type of uh, geometry be it rocks or anything like that in that case you simply cannot avoid it and you have to do it and that's it so i hope you guys had fun and you learned something new if you have any questions, leave them below and I'll meet you in the comment section of the video. If you enjoyed this video, then please click the like button. And if you're not subscribed, now would be a great time to do so. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.